Imagine stepping onto a train, and by the time you found your seat, you're already flying faster than a jet at takeoff. What if I told you that in just one year, China didn't just dream of matching aircraft speeds, they built a machine that raced airplanes and won 450 kilometers per hour, faster than a plane, real travel time, train wins. This isn't the future, this isn't theory, this already happened and it changed everything. This is the story of China's CR450, the train that defied physics, rewrote the rules, and stunned the world. Number 8. The Vision That Sparked the Race In the early 2000s, the world moved on wings. The fastest way to cross countries was to take to the skies. But China looked at the clouds, and then looked at the ground, and asked a dangerous question. What if we didn't fly over cities? What if we flew through them, on rails? This wasn't about building another bullet train. This was about redefining motion itself. By 2020, China had already built the largest high-speed rail network in the world, over 38,000 kilometers of track, more than two-thirds of the global total. But ambition doesn't rest. And the next vision wasn't just bigger, it was faster. The dream? A machine that wouldn't just match short-haul aircraft, but beat them. In speed, in convenience, in efficiency. A future where you'd ask, why fly? when the train is faster, smoother, and leaves from downtown. Boldness is the engine of innovation. That mindset, the willingness to leap, is where this story truly begins. Number seven, from concept to construction, massive scale. The idea was bold, but bold means nothing without execution. And China doesn't do small. In 2008, they broke ground on the Beijing-Shanghai High-Speed Railway just three years later, it was done. 1,318 kilometers of track, linking two of the most powerful cities on Earth. Let that sink in. Three years. For a project that would take other nations a decade of debate. This wasn't a pilot project. This was a national transformation. Thousands of engineers. Tens of thousands of workers. An entire logistics operation built around speed, not just of trains, but of development. But the train they wanted to build next was not just about building fast, it was about building faster than fast. To do that, China had to reimagine everything. The physics of motion at near jet speeds, the infrastructure to handle vibrations, heat, wear, all at an unprecedented scale. And the systems, from aerodynamics to braking, that could keep this beast under control. They didn't want a better train. They wanted a train that made planes nervous. And the prototype that would shake the world was almost ready. Number six, breaking the record, the prototype emerges. In 2025, the curtains pulled back. And what emerged wasn't just a train, it was a message. The CR450, a next generation high-speed train that didn't whisper across the tracks. It screamed. In test runs, it clocked 450 kilometers per hour. That is 281 miles per hour. Not theoretical. Not someday. Now, standard high-speed trains run at 300 to 350 kilometers per hour. The CR400AF, China's previous flagship, had a design speed of 400 kilometers per hour. The CR450? It just blew past that, without breaking a sweat. This wasn't just speed. This was a statement. China wasn't chasing the future. They were building it, faster than anyone expected. The footage went viral. The specs shocked engineers. And the implications? For the first time, a train wasn't just approaching jet speeds. It was challenging them. This train didn't just break records. It broke assumptions. Number five, faster than a plane, the game changer moment. For decades, planes ruled the skies. And the thinking went, if you want to get somewhere fast, you fly. But something changed, because speed, real-world speed, isn't just about numbers. It's about time saved, start to finish. Let's break it down. Airplane, 45 minutes, check-in and security. 30 minutes, boarding and taxiing. 90 minutes, flight. 30 minutes, deboarding, baggage, airport transit. 
Total, 3.5 to 4 hours. CR 450, 10 minutes. Arrive at station, 2 hours. Ride at 450 kilometers per hour, 5 minutes. Step out in the heart of the next city. Total, approximately 2 hours, 15 minutes. The train does not just keep up, it wins. And the best part? No runways, no weather delays, no please arrive two hours before your flight, no post-flight shuttle rides from an airport 40 kilometers outside the city. With ultra-high speed rail, you go city center to city center, like teleportation with a window view. After just one year, this was not just a transport story. It became an economic one, a social one, a geopolitical one. Airlines began to feel it. On routes under 800 kilometers, passenger share started slipping as travelers realized the new equation. Convenience plus speed plus comfort equals train. The world asked, plane or train? And China smiled, why not both? But under the hood of the CR450 is a feat of engineering few even realize. Let us open it up. Number four, engineering the leap. What makes the machine work? When you move at 450 kilometers per hour, kilometers per hour, the laws of physics get cranky. Air drag increases exponentially. Vibration becomes a safety hazard. Minor design flaws become catastrophic failures. To build the CR450, China's engineers had to reinvent almost everything. Aerodynamics, the longer nose, the smoother chassis, the seamless transitions between cars. Every curve reduces drag, turbulence, and wind resistance. Because at 450 kilometers per hour, wind is not air, it is a wall. Lightweight materials. Less weight means more speed and less energy consumed, but light is not enough. It also has to be strong, flexible, and resilient to vibration. Advanced IGBT V, 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 F inverter controls. High output water cooled motors. 25,000 volts of AC electric juice pumping through the catenary lines. The CR450 launches like a rocket and glides like a whisper. Track and infrastructure. Zero wiggle room, dedicated high-speed lines with minimal curves, gentle gradients, and millimeter-perfect leveling. The railbed itself is reinforced to handle thermal expansion, track settlement, and wind loads at jet speeds. Safety and braking from 400 km per hour to a complete stop in 112 seconds, over just 6,500 meters. That's the braking equivalent of a fighter jet. But on steel rails, every piece talks to every other. The motors, sensors, track, brakes, power supply, signaling, all in perfect harmony. Because at this speed, you don't get second chances. Put it all together, and you don't just have a fast train, you have a machine of pure calculated momentum, a moving masterpiece. One wrong variable, disaster. But when every piece clicks, you get the CR450. The moment speed became reality. Number three, the world reacts shockwaves across the globe. When China's CR450 hit 450 kilometers per hour, the reaction wasn't quiet, it was shock. Transportation ministers, aviation chief executive officers, and engineers across the globe all had the same two-word response. They what? In Europe, where the TGV and ICE have been speed kings for decades, people asked, can we even catch up? In Japan, Home of the legendary Shinkansen, the response was respectful, but urgent. In the United States? Well, while China was hitting 450 kilometers per hour, the US was still arguing about building lines that cap at 250. Guess which one made it onto the tracks? But it wasn't just the engineers that were panicking. It was the airlines. In routes under 800 kilometers, the shift was immediate. Rail wasn't just catching up to air, it was pulling ahead and people noticed. Because for the first time, speed wasn't limited to runways and wings. It was running on steel rails through downtown cores in record time. This wasn't just a flex, it was a signal. The fastest way forward might be sideways. Number two, strategy of speed, geopolitics on steel rails. Because this wasn't just a tech story, this was a geostrategic masterstroke at the every high-speed line, not just a transport route, it is an economic artery. Connecting people means connecting cities. Connecting cities means creating mega regions. And mega regions become global economic engines. From Beijing to Shanghai, Guangzhou to Shenzhen, 
Chengdu to Chongqing. These are not small commutes. They are some of the most powerful economic corridors on Earth, now linked by trains that make air travel irrelevant. And unlike runways, these tracks don't move. Every city touched by high-speed rail sees higher GDP, more tourism, greater mobility, faster freight, tighter national unity. And here is the punchline. Planes are transit. Trains are transformation. Because when you connect people in minutes, not hours, you reshape a nation's economy, mobility, and culture. And while others waited for the future, China laid the tracks for it. They didn't just build a train, they built a competitive advantage. Number one, what's next? The supersonic challenge. So here's the question. What comes after 450 kilometers per hour? Answer, 600 and beyond. In 2021, China unveiled a magnetic levitation prototype capable of speeds up to 600 kilometers per hour. No wheels, no contact, no friction, just levitation. And it's not stopping there. Combine maglev with vacuum tubes, you are entering Hyperloop territory, ground travel, at jet speed, maybe one day even faster. What if the future of transportation doesn't fly? What if it floats? What if crossing continents meant staying on the ground? China is already testing it, building it, refining it. And when the CR450 proved they could go faster than planes, it wasn't just a win. It was a green light for the next chapter. The race is on. Japan is watching. Germany is researching. The United States is debating. But China, China is already moving. The future of speed isn't just about how fast we move. It's about how smart we move. And China just proved they know the way. Would you ride a train faster than a jet? Comment below, like, share, subscribe.